All right, Raph, the draft lottery is now complete. And the Spurs are on the clock. Consensus pick, Wemby, Victor Webanyana, the 7'5 Frenchman that is probably the most hyped player since LeBron James. Do this? Is there any chance the Spurs do not take him, number one? Probably not. Um, so what does that mean for everything else? I don't think we really need to talk about what Victor... Well, actually, now that his landing spot is is pretty much determined, do you think that that's a, impacted his draft positioning at all? Where do you see him going? I think he's someone that you could see come off of fantasy boards as soon as the third round. Um, because what everything he brings to the table, he can shoot from three-point range. He can score in the, in the mid-range. Um, he's not the strongest, not most physically strong player. That's okay. You know, this isn't like the 90s era NBA where you had back to the basket centers just, you know, looking to beat the hell out of each other. He's and not bodied gonna... by Antonio Davis and exactly. Charles Oakley. <laughs> yeah. That's not his game. You know, he's not going to be asked to do that. Um, I think if anything, you look at the Spurs from a fantasy standpoint, I think Zach Collins would be the one who's impacted the most. Uh, yeah. Wimbanyama can play either the four or the five, but I think Collins is the one who takes the hit in terms of a place in the starting lineup. Um, Greg Popovich did say at the end of the regular season that you know, it was fair to assume that Collins would be the starting center going into camp, but that was April 9th, and on May 16th, they won the draft lottery. So <laughs> with all due respect to Zach, it'll still be in the rotation, but I have a hard time believing he would start over Wimbanyama. Um Maybe Jer- Jeremy Sohan. Um, I think yeah, I could help him if anything. You know, having that type of player next to you defensively maybe gets him a bit more aggressive in terms of steals and even some blocks. So I think he's someone else to keep an eye on there in terms of fantasy impact of Wimbanyama's arrival. Yeah, I was thinking, what would their projected starting lineup be? So yeah. Trey Jones, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson. Um, Sohan, and then I would probably say Wemby, and yeah. then bring Zach Collins off the bench. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you could probably swap out, you know, maybe you run Wemby at the four, Collins at the five. You yeah. know, I think that Pop is probably very excited, probably the most excited he's been since <laughs> drafting Tim Duncan right now, mm-hmm. enough that he's like, you know what, this tank, this tank yeah. job was worth it, man. Um, mm-hmm. just, just uh, I think an uh, ideal landing spot for him to grow and develop with so much international prominence that's come out of that, that San Antonio franchise. I think this is probably the best situation that could have happened. Not only that, he doesn't have a lot of fantasy competition in terms of Mm -hmm. usage rate, Um, just stars on the team. Like Wemby insert him into this lineup and he is the man. So I think that's probably the best thing you could have asked for from a fantasy perspective. I think people are probably going to be overly aggressive on Wemby probably get some second round values in there, but I think third round is, is certainly a place where I would probably feel comfortable just given the block upside scoring potential. Um, I think we're going to actually see the rebounds a little bit understated. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like rookie of the year is actually gonna be very competitive this year. Chet Holmgren. uh, I think they actually have kind of similar games in terms Mm -hmm. of like what they can do in terms of shooting defensively, Um, so I'm curious to see how that actually kind of shakes out between them and the battle for rookie of the year. Um, because both are in really good situations that I think would command um a lot of respect um in in their respective situations. 